Hi there, it's Daniel Thornton here. I'm so thrilled to be with you, even via camera, uh, to talk about worship leading and uh, love you guys and uh, really value this opportunity to share a little bit of my own journey, both as a worship worshiper, as a worship leader, as a worship pastor in different contexts and I really hope and pray that uh, something uh, that I share today will be um, really helpful in your journey of leadership. I don't know if I'm only talking to worship leaders or, or aspiring worship leaders here, if I'm also talking to uh, the wider uh, worship team then I, I still I want to in encourage you that I see everyone on the platform and in fact even you know ev everyone in the whole team that's contributing to worship whether it's through words or, or through sound uh, I see every single one of those as people who are leading worship in fact when I'm in the congregation uh, I, I am still leading worship because uh, I am an example and I don't know who might be looking at me or not looking at me uh, but but I'm certainly going to be someone who, um, if people did look at me, they would see something that that they want to reflect, that that they they want to copy in in you know in their own uh, personal way, something that inspires them to worship. So you are a worship leader, no matter what title you've got, no matter whether you're on the platform or not, you're a leader of worship because you're a worshipper who is especially if you're on the platform you know you're visible but but even when you're not on the platform uh, you know people see people notice uh, so I guess you know that's uh, it, it's really interesting to me that there are certain performance uh, qualities that I would want someone to uh, to have mastered those those skills performance skills uh, for for the platform uh, and that doesn't mean uh, and you know some of those things you wouldn't do off the platform just in the pew um, but nevertheless you know that uh, it that genuine heart of worship and that genuine desire to to inspire those around you to connect with God in the way that you do um, I think is is great is brilliant so where should we start? Look, we always have to start with an individual's personal relationship with God because um, everything does rise and fall on it. And, you know, we could talk about spiritual disciplines and you know, just, just being in the Word and, uh, and worshipping personally. Um, I, I don't think I need to spend much time in that space if you haven't already realised that those things are vitally connected to to what you do on the platform, then um, yeah, that that would be a problem. <laughs> uh, there, I guess uh, when you are good at the craft of leading worship, um, you know you you can stand on the platform and sort of tick all the boxes in terms of your engagement, encouragement, and and your musical uh, skill. That it is possible that over time you could wonder whether th that personal unseen w world of your worship is really making much of a difference. Uh, but over and over and over again uh, I could tell you stories of, of people who've begun to feel that maybe it doesn't matter so much and, and what inevitably happens is you kind of, it eats away underneath the foundations until there's nothing left. And even though the, the building might be looking great for a long time, it can suddenly all collapse. So uh, it's, it's something that I'm sure I've said before, but if, if you never sing or play in church, in a church service ever again, uh, that is not your value your value to God and your value to the church is not in what you do. It's in who you are. And who you are stems in the, from that knowledge of whose we are, that we are God's children and that that relationship is something that has an ongoing vital uh, life about it. And look, 
you know, there are seasons. There are seasons where I've been really deep in the word, and uh, and and seasons where I found it really difficult to to get anything from the word. I mean, I'll I'll be real. You know, there there are seasons that you go through in life, but just in the over the long term, uh, keep just building that relationship with God uh, through prayer, through worship, through the Word, through all the things that you know, through the encouragement of others and the the, the iron sharpening iron of, of, of other people, and uh, that will all that all feeds into being able to lead worship well. Um, <clears throat> And that's always, that's the foundation. So anything else that I talk about uh, and some of the, the other things that I might talk about might seem kind of more, oh great, I could really use that. Um, but actually what I've just spoken about is, is foundationally the most important thing. All right. Um, there, there are absolutely skills to leading worship. And I, I do think worship leaders and all those involved in worship are, are in some pretty, in a challenging kind of, situation because uh, you you are the meat in between I used to sort of talk about like a three breaded sandwich <laughs> yeah. uh, on the one side obviously you're just trying to connect with God which is which is wonderful like how can you lead worship if you, if you can't even uh, give your focus and, and give your worship to God in that public setting so you're trying to focus on God what, what is he saying? What is he doing? Uh, what's the Holy Spirit trying to, to do in a meeting? But then you've also got the congregation. You, you, you can't just be off in your own wonderful worshipping world uh, <laughs> and, and leave the congregation behind or simply hope that your example is, they're going to follow your example. Now, now I do think what the, the congregation is often some kind of mirror of what we are doing on the platform and therefore what we do in terms of of our physical expressions of worship and um, you know the way that we might spontaneously sing in between uh, areas to express our own song to God all of that will be reflected somewhat in the congregation uh, yeah but uh, but the congregation they also need our focus and attention. They need, uh, they need to be encouraged. We need to know where they're up to. We, we want to, to, to get that sense of this group of people and find the way to get them from wherever they are to that, that intimate place of connection with God. And when you come on a, a Sunday or whenever your service might be, you don't know where people are up to, right? Uh, I mean, you've got... You've got some who have just had the best week of their life and they're prayed up and they've just had a great miracle and they're coming in and it's all praise and thanksgiving and they're ready to worship. And you've got someone who is is having the worst week of their life. Maybe great grief or loss or pain or, or brokenness. Uh, and you have this vast spectrum of people who are coming in and somehow... You need to find this way to connect with all of them and not just the person who's so easy to lead into worship and not just the person who looks like they're so resistant, you know, there's nothing you could do to, to get them to worship. Um, you, we, we do need to focus on the congregation and, and, and work with them and work out those right things to do or to say um, and not just kind of... Uh, we can get very much into our pattern. We know we've got this song and it's a verse and it's a chorus and then we build and then we can and then we're going to you know say this and then we're going to go on to the next song and and we can very quickly make it into a uh, just a, a method uh, that we do without perhaps really thinking about what's happening in the congregation and what could I say or what could I do at this moment. Maybe we need to sing that chorus a few more times. Maybe I need to pull something else out here that's, that's just going to shift the atmosphere. So we're, we're trying to worship God. We're, we're trying to connect with congregation. And, you know, as far as that goes, um, can I say love, love the people. Love the congregation. 
look, they, some of them might have given you lots of reasons not to love them. Some of them might have, you know, not spoken to you very well or, or given you a, a mean look or, or just, you know, they've done something to, to someone you love and you, you haven't forgiven them yet. Uh, we, we have to be able to stand on that platform and look at people the way that God looks at them and not look at them through our own lens of offense or you know, unforgiveness or anything like that. Um, that is not going to help us lead them uh, to worship. You know, if anything, if we start to look at them through our lens, you, we will either kind of whip them, you know, we will uh, not encourage them, but really kind of scold them or you know, tell them what they should be doing because we know, we know that that person, they should be repenting before God. Uh, love we we have to be able to see every one of those individuals through the same eyes that Christ saw them through when he when he was nailed to that cross and he said father forgive them for they don't know what they do that's pretty hard sometimes no. but unless we can do that we're really not going to be effective worship leaders so we've got to love we've got to love our congregation and, and um, even if that's an act of our will, you know, even if we're simply just making that decision to love them uh, through, through Christ, um, even if we don't feel like it. Uh, so that's really important. But so you've got, you're trying to worship God, you're trying to connect with the congregation. And then you, you also, especially if you're leading worship, you, you're trying to lead your, your own band. You've got people who uh, you're working with to make all this happen. And, and so you've got, um, you know, you've got to give direction. You've got to um, get, make sure that they're on board with you, that, 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 that there's not this kind of uh, struggle within the team. Uh, and that can happen for all kinds of reasons. It can happen for personality reasons. It can happen because uh, roles are not clearly defined. Uh, you know, if you've got a music director and a worship leader, you know, that music director... If they start to take on worship leader functions, then you know that there can be kind of a clash. No, we go to the chorus here, but uh, no, I didn't feel like we we should go to the chorus there. I felt like we should do something else. So you've got to make sure that the the roles are really clear, and um, and and then that you're doing everything to build that unity, good communication, encouragement. Uh, getting their buy-in you know they're not just your your if you're a worship leader they're not just your your extras they're not just your backing group no we are one team even if i'm up the front even if i'm i'm directing we're one team trying to to lift up the congregation and bring them into that encounter with god so our attitude in that space uh it, look, rehearsals, rehearsals. Sometimes they're frustrating. Sometimes they're not as fruitful. So, sometimes there's just a, equipment issues that you've got. Th there can be all kinds of reasons why rehearsals um, might be a challenge, and uh, and they really do set the tone for the service. So we we need to make sure that uh, rehearsals, as much as they're within our power that they're enjoyable, that they're fun, that they're focused, we're not wasting time, no one wants their time wasted, um, and that that not only do we achieve the, the kind of excellence in music uh, that we want to reflect God, but that we also are so mindful of the, the Spirit at work in and through us, um, wanting to move through us in a way that ministers to the people, uh, and and you know enlivens that that uh, profound encounter that, that we believe they're going to have as they worship. Great. So so uh, I think trying to give our focus between those different places can be a, a real challenge. It can be a real challenge. And then you know ultimately it's a, 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 it's. Either out the pastor who uh, who's above us, or, or perhaps senior pastor or senior leadership, who have given us the platform, and I never take that for granted. The platform is not yours. The platform is not mine. 
um, God has uh, ordained someone uh, to to be the head of that body um, under Christ and that person is making decisions based on their own revelation and based on their own observation uh, you know even if we're great at what we do um, you know if we're not being put on as much as we think we should or um, you know we're not being given the time that we think should be given to worship all those things are ultimately they're out of our hands and we need to submit all of our desires to God because really at the end of the day who is this about and we might go well it's about God but I know that you know I could have made that service much more um, powerful I know I could have brought the the, the anointing and, and all of that and, and I wasn't put on that that other person was put on who who doesn't do things as well as I do any of that kind of stuff that rises up within us we've got to deal with those attitudes constantly any kind of pride uh, you know, we see it back there even before creation with Lucifer uh, music and especially those platform positions they can puff us up uh, we can begin to feel like we deserve them that that they're ours by right and they're not like someone is actually giving us someone is allowing us uh, someone is empowering us to to function thank you cook and <laughs> uh, in in those roles and uh, and and so we need to always approach those with submission and with humility uh, knowing that they're not ours uh, and and even, you know ultimately they're not even the, the senior pastors they're gods and God has ordained you know leaders to to appoint and to to give to, to allow for the ministry of the Saints uh, and ministry to the Saints uh, so yeah we've got to we got to really stay humble stay humble stay humble uh, Often we feel like our preferences are God's preferences. I don't know if you've thought about that before, but you know, we because we've encountered God in a particular way, through a particular song that we love or through whatever, we think, well, clearly, you know, that's God's on that at the moment. That's that's what God's doing, that's what God's connecting with. But maybe that's what God's doing with us individually. Maybe that's not how He's connecting with the rest of the congregation and so we've got to be careful not to make our preferences uh, not to kind of project those onto God and therefore when someone makes a different decision and says actually look uh, we're only going to worship for 15 minutes instead of 30 that we don't go no no God God can't move in 15 minutes he he only moves in 30 minutes uh, I know that sounds ridiculous but we can get to those places where we've kind of uh, projected our preferences onto God as if you know this is the only way that God uh, works all right I think uh, there's a fair bit I've covered there some of the just some of the practical elements uh, so performance craft of a worship leader uh, they're important they're not the most important but they're still really important you've actually got to be good at, you got you got to be able to sing in tune you, you've got to be able to remember the words, or at least you know, not not need to be glued to the uh, to the lyrics. I, I you know, some there's been many many times where I've you know had those moments of brain freeze and kind of gone, oh, what's what's that next lyric? It, that happens. But overall, um, we want to be excellent in our craft, and and here's why: it's not just excellence for excellence sake. It's that that having practiced, having rehearsed, having disciplined our, our skills and our, our technical ability, it when that's at a high level, it's easier to serve rather than when it's at a low level and we're so focused on, you know, how do we how do we move our hand to that next chord or or uh, you know how do I produce that sound? Um, and then it's far more difficult to focus on just worshiping God or, or, or focusing on the congregation or, or leading the team. So I do encourage you, 
every way possible improve your excellence in your craft in your musical craft so that it can simply serve you better as a worship leader and serve the congregation better um, so those skills are important and of course for vocalists we need to always be really careful that what we're doing vocally is sustainable very easy in loud environments to to strain our voice and so we have to learn uh, how to produce sound in a, in a way that you know is not going to do damage over the long term uh, in terms of our presentation skills look no matter what you're going through your primary concern when you're on the platform is not where you're up to it's it's where the congregation's up to so in that sense you know I've been through gr great times and really tough times but when I'm on the platform my focus is I think some people think I, no I need to be an authentic worshiper so like I don't want to I don't want to put something on if I'm really feeling deep and contemplative and uh, well <laughs> that's okay uh, like you've got to you've got to be real but you also don't want to project your you know your emotional roller coaster or your particular moment onto the congregation uh, what we need to project is the truth the truth of who God is the truth of of, uh, of what happens when we worship we need to orient people towards God not towards us um, so you know I am constantly thinking of ways to encourage to lift up uh, that can be done through simple things like smiling at the congregation you know, people would prefer that you smile at them they're gonna feel better if you smile at them than if you if you scowl at them um, and I don't see that as something fake I see that as some what a wonderful gift I can give to the congregation by learning how to make my face smile right because because I want to be I want to encourage them to worship uh, so smile um, enjoy worship <laughs> I think on the platform there's uh, there's always some kind of distance between even the the uh, a distance between the, the platform and the front row, let alone the platform and the back row. So our actions have to be bigger from the platform. Our movement has to be bigger because by the time it gets to the back row, it, it's amazing how diminished you know that energy has 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 come has become over that that space. Um, so even though it might feel a little uh, less comfortable perhaps to put my hands right up instead of just you know I feel more comfortable with my hands just you know close to me it's not about you at that point it's about how am I helping the congregation to worship and that's going to be with bigger movement on the platform uh, so that I can connect with the person in the back row um, energy look uh, there's many times you maybe you don't feel like bringing that energy to to your worship but uh, I think it it pays dividends not just for the congregation but it pays dividends for you uh, there's there's a few Psalms and I wish I, I've they've disappeared from my head but the Psalms that talk about um, our physical worship and, and and it has occurred to me that some, sometimes we are waiting to feel like a moment where we should lift our hands or we should dance you know I'm just waiting for that for the right sound or the right but in fact uh, sometimes the physical precedes the spiritual encounter that is if we would lift our hands if we would dance before the Lord then actually that even if we didn't feel like it the result of that physical engagement could actually be the catalyst for a, a, a spiritual encounter. Um, so, so I think our, our physical presentation is really important. Uh, worship leaders need to be really careful they don't talk too much. Most of our talking, if, if it's at all encouragement to the congregation, should be in the, in the, not in between songs, because that's kind of a place where, where people can tune out but you know bring that encouragement within a song perhaps when the music just comes down and 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 you know you bring that encouragement and then you keep singing and so that you've you've taken people on this journey and and then you've brought in this encouragement out of which they can lift whereas 
uh, you know, too much talking in between songs kind of means it, it drops off and then you've kind of got to build up again uh, at, at that kind of emotional journey level. So definitely don't over talk. Um, you know, the preacher is there. They're, they're going to do lots of talking. Uh, when people are worshipping, they don't want to be talked at, you know, too much. Um, but, you know, also don't say nothing. Like, don't just sing because because that those little bits of encouragement, those even if it's just the next line of the song that you're feeding the congregation. I know it's up on the screen, but it's amazing how when you when you say that next line of the song, you are kind of engaging everyone. You're you're declaring that that's going to be the next thing that comes out of their mouth. So um, so there's real this power in that encouragement in the midst of song. Um, uh, spontaneous singing. Look. The, the details of what your senior pastor wants in, in that space, whether they want, you know, whether they want tongues, singing in tongues is okay. Uh, maybe singing in tongues is not what they want in a public setting. Um, maybe if, if there's any kind of singing in tongues, maybe they want interpretation. Look, I've been in lots of different church contexts and you know, lots of different views on this and preferences. And at the end of the day, uh, again, I'm under authority, so I'll just flow with uh, the instructions that I'm given. It doesn't affect my worship or, or what I believe about those things, but uh, you know, I'm going to um, uh, just run with the the authority that's given me, so that um, I'll, I'll be blessed in that. I'm not pushing against that, creating all kinds of tension. Uh, any other performance craft things? Uh, I think closing your eyes too much is is a way. You know, it might help you focus on God, but it actually it, uh, it blocks your connection to people. So, connecting with people, looking at people, uh, not staring people down, but 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 looking at people like friends, connecting with people that way uh, can be a really powerful thing to do. Now look, there's probably lots more <laughs> to say, but hopefully somewhere in there there's been uh, something that's been inspiring or useful or helpful to you. So let me pray for you and uh, I will let you get on with what you're doing. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every person who's watching right now. Uh, worship leading is such an extraordinary privilege. This idea that you would allow us to to gather your people, to love your people, to encourage your people into those moments of encounter, those moments of transforming impact that, that could change their lives forever. Uh, we are so grateful for, for those opportunities. And Lord, I just pray that your anointing would rest upon every single uh, worship leader, that it would increase upon them, that they would be aware that they're not doing this in their own strength or their own gifting or their own skill, but it's always uh, in complete submission and, and hunger for your spirit to speak through us and move through us and lead through us and lift people up and bring about that encounter that you desire for your people. So I thank you for each one of these individuals, Lord, whether they're in a great season, whether they're in a challenging season, Lord, you are the faithful one who sees them through every season of their life. Lord, continue to build uh, your um, life and fruitfulness through them. Uh, continue to demonstrate your faithfulness as they continue to rest in you and love you and serve you all the days of their life. I speak blessing over them and over the church in Jesus' name. Amen.